So most people talk about their headphones. I just brought this as a joke. So. Okay. Yeah, so let's get the headphones. <laughs> Sorry. Hey GQ, my name is Andrew Ray. I make a YouTube channel called Binging with Babish, and these are my essentials. Most people come on this show and they talk about their phones and their cool Bose headphones and their life extending face cream. Me, I'm gonna talk about my meds. <laughs> Lactate, everybody should have lactate. I am lactose intolerant, most people are. Keep some of this around. Surprise, uh, you know, ice cream cake in the uh, in the break room. Boom, no problem. Then we got, uh, you know, I got allergies, Flonase, all day. Most people don't know this about me. I am deathly allergic to a mystery thing. <laughs> I went into anaphylactic shock twice. The first time was the day before my wedding, uh, which uh, as, that didn't uh, work out. Omen, I don't know. I was driving through the countryside to the barn wedding, because it was a barn wedding. I started getting all puffy and I couldn't breathe and I look in the mirror and I'm twice my normal size and I'm like, oh Jesus God. <laughs> I have no idea what brought it on. Second time I was at a protest. I hadn't eaten or drank anything for six hours. Same deal, dual IVs and I go to the allergist to get checked out, get tested for everything. I'm a little allergic to everything but I'm not that allergic to anything. So they were like, it could have just been a chemical compound in the air that you inhaled. Now I just I live in fear all the time, like that could just, it just waft through the air and kill me. So yeah, I carry, I carry an EpiPen with me. These are my antidepressants. I take antidepressants. I try to talk very openly about that because I think mental health is not discussed openly enough in this country and in the world in general. I really am only doing what I'm doing today and here and talking to you guys because I sought help when I needed it. <sighs> underwear. Ow. Everybody uh, needs underwear. <laughs> You should, you should have, you should have underwear on right now. If you don't, what well, I, I remember the first time I got like really nice underwear, especially uh, boxer briefs that really hugged my, my, uh, and, it, and uh, it's uh, uh, it was it was it was it was a game changer. Like I can't tell you how nice it is to wear nice underwear, and there's way nicer underwear than this. This is just what I've become accustomed to. All I can say is if you've got if you find yourself with fifty hot dollars to drop. Upgrade your underwear game, because it's gonna change your whole outlook on Literally on It'd be crazy to come on My Essentials and not talk about some cooking stuff, and uh, this is the thing that I proselytize the most, which is a uh, good chef's knife. This is invaluable. This is the most useful tool that you can get for the kitchen. Forget slappy inventions and twisty inventions that do it all for you and that you use three times and then it breaks. Just forget all the gadgets. This does the work of most of the things that you could buy as seen on TV. It's, you know, it's a little beat up as this is the first chef's knife I ever got. I got it as a gift from my old bosses, John and Diana, who are still my dear friends to this day. And this knife is still a dear friend to this day. Uh, it's still, you know, I keep it sharp, relatively sharp. Somebody got us a, a sheet of paper? Do a, little, do a little test? All right, so we'll see if I keep my sh sharp. Hang on. Oh yeah! Oh, oh. Cut that one out. <laughs> this one tool, forget a knife block, this one tool is gonna give you more functionality than most things in your kitchen, and, and that, that's why I, I'm a huge advocate for having a, uh, a good chef's knife. Uh, this is an eight inch Gustav classic icon, and yeah, this will run you about 120 bucks. You wanna step up from there, get a shun. Do not put it through the dishwasher. That will dull it uh, for sure, and uh, could rust it, which would just be a huge pain in the ass. Wash it gently. Wash it immediately, don't let it sit in the sink all the time, and keep it sharp. Every once in a while, every year, get it professionally sharpened. We've been through so much together. Um, you can see it's just like battle scarred, and it's, it's seen some stuff. It's, it's seen some roommates that have put it through the dishwasher, my friend. This is a carving fork, but it's not just any carving fork. This is the carving fork from the movie Chef. Uh, this was given to me by John Favreau in an episode of my show, an episode of, uh, of his show, Chef Show. Um, this is the actual fork that he used to plate up the pasta for Scarlett Johansson, and then she just like, I the hell out of him. He was kind enough to give this to me, and it's one of my most prized possessions, and most people ask me, when are you gonna get this bronzed and framed? And no, this belongs in my 
kitchen drawer uh, and it continues to twirl pasta to this day. Watch any episodes that I've done recently where I've twirled pasta, you will see this fork because this is the, the, that's that's what this was for and you know, it's not gonna break. <laughs> just just keep, keep going. I think you would like knowing that uh, it's still making pasta. Time pieces are something that I've gotten very into. As you can see, I dress pretty plainly. When I'm on the show, it's a button-up shirt and a black apron. When I'm out in the world, it's this. I always wear just the, the black Henley. My daily wear is this. It's a uh, Rolex two-tone Submariner gold stainless with a with a blue uh, bezel and uh, and dial. I was not expecting to buy this, but I, was, I wasn't planning on hitting the New York, New York Times bestseller list. When that happened, I went into a watch shop. I told them I was celebrating. They were like, okay, we got something in the back. And they pulled this out and I was, I was like, oh, it's a little too much for me. And I put it on my wrist and I was like, oh. So I got big into watches about two years ago. I guess I should probably go in chronological order here. Chronological. Uh, uh, this was the first watch that I got. I got it because I felt like I should get a Rolex. Things are going well, I should get a Rolex. We we'll should get the cheapest one I get my hands on and the smallest one I get my hands on because I don't like chunky watches. Boy, did that change. Yeah, I got it and it just didn't scratch the itch that I was hoping to scratch. And then a buddy of mine has a Submariner and I tried it on and it just changed my whole life. I won this one by accident. <laughs> I discovered a website called liveauctioneers.com. I had never bid on anything in any auction ever. And I just wanted to see what it felt like. And I was like, it might as well be a Rolex. And I just put the second bid down on this. I never thought in a million years that I would win it, but that was it. <laughs> and I won it and I was like, oh, I just bought this Rolex. It's from 1981. It's just like the most 80s, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I love it to death and it's one of my favorites. This is a Champagne Daytona. It is quite literally the gaudiest thing in the world. I bought it in like a back room watch dealer. It was cool, <laughs> or this like empty, bombed out office with like a bunch of old IMAX wrapped up in plastic and nobody working there. And I just meet at a corner desk and this guy pulls an envelope out of his desk with the watches that I wanted to see. It was the coolest, weirdest experience. One of the end marks of being a watch collector is getting that watch that's like, ooh, what am I doing? And that was this watch. I was like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? When you put this on your wrist, you feel like Tony Soprano. It's like, <laughs> it's it's next level. It's so cool. Even though he wears a gold president. Don't, don't worry, I know what I'm talking about. This is my workhorse. I got this guy to celebrate finishing my book. It's just, you know, it's a knock around watch. Like, you know, it's, it's I mean, you see I'm being, I'm trying to be like badass, but no, I'm gonna be ginger with it. See, I can really toss it around. I mostly wear this on the show because it's not as showy. It's not as like loud. It's a classic watch. Like it's pretty much the thing that you picture when you close your eyes and picture a Submariner. And I love wearing it on the show because it doesn't grab too much attention. It, it's just a great workhorse watch. I can't defend find time pieces because I know that like, there's no real reason to spend this much money on watches, but the craftsmanship and the legend of Rolex, it's addicting. I'm completely addicted. I'll probably only ever stick to Rollies because they entrance me. Next up is uh, my uh, c cologne. I believe in smelling good. I don't think it costs a lot to smell good. You can smell good using a very limited budget, but I wanted to try to get like a, a really curated scent. So I got this when I was in Paris. I went to Paris for the first time last year and I went to a cool parfumery and I had every intention of having like one of those custom scents made, but I smelled this and I was like, this is all that is man. I threw it on, it's called Crazy Hours by Frank, M Frank Mueller of Genève. It's, it smells good. I like it. You would like it too if you could smell it here. Sorry. Now here we have some Kentucky bourbon. Dip 1796, I don't know. It's very good. This is sweet and mellow and complex, so it's lovely to sip on its own, but you wouldn't be so shy as to not make a cocktail from it. You can make a lovely old fashioned with this. I think that's the sweet spot for, for bourbon. Obviously I have an appreciation for really high end bourbon, uh, but this guy's, you know, it's 50 bucks in New York, which means that it's probably 35 everywhere else in the world. And then over here I have some lovely Saint Louis French crystal. Uh, this was given to me by a dear friend for my birthday last year. And I love like retro art deco crystal like this. You feel like you're, you know, in Mad Men when you're drinking from something like this. If you're gonna outfit your bar, get some cool, really thin or really ornate You're gonna feel like a goddamn king when you drink. <laughs> That's money in the bank, <laughs> okay? And also, you know, glassware like this, your kids are gonna inherit this. <sighs> it's been a long day already. 
Basil Hayden's. Make mine at Basil Hayden's. Next up, eyewear. I don't have much of a prescription. That's my dirty little secret. Uh, but like 2040 in this eye, 2030 in this eye. It's pretty much just like for watching movies and driving at night, but I feel much more comfortable behind glasses, especially on camera. Um, just makes me feel like I'm in my little glasses house. These are uh, Oliver Peoples, and these are my bald sunglasses for when I'm not rocking a hat. And then these are my hat sunglasses. These are Tom Ford, um, and uh, these look better when, I, as you can tell, because they probably look a little weird right now, but these look better when I'm wearing a hat. Do you agree? I'm asking. Dentec Easy Brush Flossers. These are the pinnacle of flossing technology. I am an advocate for daily, if not twice daily, flossing. I floss at least twice a day. And as such, I have never had a cavity. I have never had braces. That's not the reason. <laughs> this is not the reason why that happened. That is pure luck. Not even Gen X. My brother had like headgear until he was like 17. I've never had a cavity. Uh, I use, uh, uh, you know, not only the string floss and brush picks, but also these when I really want to get f***ing hardcore about it. These guys do a job. There is a wire, literally a, str a strand of twisted wire in there with a brush coming out of it. That's what you're shoving between your teeth. This blows out plaque like a mother <laughs> I probably use these once or twice a week. You will bleed, you will cry, you will scream, but you'll thank me later. <laughs> That's uh, my essentials, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I hope that you try some of those things for yourself, and I'll see you next time on Babish's 10 Non-Essentials.